Hey YouTube, my name's Parker and welcome to another episode of Sailing Sea Wind. If this is your first time watching, we hope you enjoy, and if you've been here for a while, welcome back. We would love it if you subscribe to our channel because it really helps our videos get out there. Last time I dug into redesigning our diesel exhaust system, and while that project isn't finished just yet, we have some really interesting projects and some upgrades that we're excited to show you this week. So sit back, enjoy, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss an episode. Cheers! Uh, because, oh, that's okay. I varnished these separately, but apparently the glue, the varnish was new enough that it didn't, uh, that it stuck mm. the back to this one. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to glue this back on <laughs> with a little bit of wood glue. That'll glue right back in there. Here is one of my projects that I'm working on. Um, I rebuilt this whole bathroom about a year and a half ago. Redid the entire shower sump. I built this shelf here. This was non-existent. Maybe this is a good segue after this video to talk about the head and the whole makeover of it. But anyway, so I put this shelf on here. This is what our composting toilet sits on. When we came back to the boat, there was a trail of water coming all down here and there was this like weird liquid sitting down here and we followed it back and there are you can see cracks right here in the paint and then there's a crack up here just looks like in the paint but here's the here's the crazy thing so here's solid hull So this is hollow in here. I have to see what the hell is going on in here. And then I need to fix, if you remember from back when I found while we were sailing, a couple of seeping parts of the hull right here. If we were actually getting drips of water through the hull. Wow, we have a hole in the hull right here. A little teeny tiny pinhole. I don't believe it. There's nothing, no wonder I couldn't find it last time. Yeah, there's nothing above here. And then right here and right here are these little pinholes. Here and here, for my future self for patching this, this whole area. Right here and right here. And then there's this weird little crack in the paint right here. Don't really know what that is from. I fixed this whole bulkhead right here. This was like one of the first projects I did on the boat. Um, and yeah, so I gotta fix this. I gotta grind this, these three things out and this. I think this might be a blister, which would be the weirdest thing in the world. I don't know why I would have a blister on the inside of the hull. Now we have a barrier coat on the outside of the hull, but the boat sat out of the water for six years before I bought it. So it, it had a lot of time to dry out if anything was going on. I've never had an osmotic blister on the hull um, and, the, and the bottom paint on the outside of the hull looks perfect. There's no blistering at all. So I'm very confused. And so I guess we're gonna see what's going on under here. This is one of my other favorite tools. This is a carbide bit. Put it on an extension on the drill. So you'll see this a lot when I'm building the Dodger. And this is what I've shaped fillets and inside corners and everything like that with. I'm gonna use this to just kinda scrape into this and see what's going on. Thank you. 
All right, so what I can see here is that this here is some old tabbing from this bulkhead. This is the edge of the tabbing. Um, so I'm guessing that that is the crack that I saw in the paint. Uh, I got the trim off here. I decided that it'd be best to take this wall off. To set this out there. Mm. Luckily, this crack in the paint right here, you can see that crack in the paint right there. I think that is completely cosmetic. I don't think anything is happening underneath there. This is just a bit of the fiberglass tabbing that is lifted a bit from the hall. I'm not really concerned about that other than the fact that it was weeping. I think the best plan of action will to be just to sand this here and then put a piece of fiberglass in it. And then here, I'm gonna sand this, put a little piece of fiberglass here, and maybe one right here. This is fine, I just need to glue something to here. This has been prepped for a while, I just haven't glued it in and I'm gonna do it now. Okay, I have the areas prepped. I'm gonna put a little piece of fiberglass in here. Um, I, this was just this tabbing that was uh, coming up a bit from laying this up right here. I don't know if I'm gonna, I'll put a little piece over that and this, this is fine. And I'm gonna put a, a rectangular piece in there as well. Got a piece of glass over that, put up one over that, um, and I even fared it because it's a chemical bond if you do it before the fiberglass, before everything cures, you can put another layer on top of it. So I put a fairing compound on top, 
I did the same thing down here. I was able to glue in permanently this, uh, this block for the back of that shelf that I made. Yeah, whoo wee. All right, I think that's all of the fiberglassing. <laughs> I think that shelf is probably, probably dry already because it's kind of warm. So I smoothed this out, this will get some white paint sometime in the future, so will this. That'll get some blue paint down there. There's no change in sound now anywhere around there, so I think I've solved the problem. So, it is hot today. Um, Katie went to buy some groceries, so that's why I'm doing this. I'm glad it's done. I'm glad all this epoxy cured today. That's the benefit of working in the heat. If you don't have it um, go off on you, it's called exotherming. You can have the epoxy run away from itself and, and then it hardens really fast and maybe not in the shape that you want it. And then also it's weaker overall. So I'm very happy with how all of this stuff came out. Yeah. Turn that down a bit. There we go. Well, I'm gonna clean up a bit. Uh-oh. She's back. <laughs> there she is. Oh no. So that concerned. No, you shouldn't be concerned. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I promise. <laughs> well, I got a lot done. I got a lot of groceries. Oh, that's good. We should make a place to put them. We have a place. I know, I'm just teasing. So, the GoPro sp screen has been periodically flashing like static or something. Huh. All right. Was I caught red-handed or did, did I just finish at an opportune time? <laughs> I don't know. Groceries! Oh yeah. Got the groceries. Katie, you did good. Thanks. Just, you know, another day of living with a disassembled boat. <laughs> clean up time? Clean up time. It's clean up time! This is my shelf trick. I made this 
that swings up and it has a hole that is exactly quarter inch and then I used a, a pin that goes in there. So when I now, I just glued this in so hopefully this fits. Yeah, it does. So that back is finally supported. It hasn't been. Can you line up that? There we go. Just like that. So that is a very stable shelf that can be disassembled very easily to take all this apart. So I guess this would be a really good time to go over the head build video. Because <laughs> I basically just showed you guys exactly how it goes together. Um, so I guess that'll be the first one. I've made my decision. Okay. We're gonna go of course, no, because I have to go back to the beginning. I really don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I have so much to show you guys. I guess I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wing it like usual. Hope you guys enjoy it. So I'm not painting those little spots because I don't have any paint. I have the white, I don't have the gray. I, um, this color here is what I used for all the inside ceiling. And it's a one part um, from Interlux. So I need to get a f a some. So this is just gonna live just like that down there. No big deal, I'll just be able to take that trim piece off the bottom. I hope that little thing I just tried to stick back on there, that piece of veneer doesn't come off when I do that, but oh well. This whole wall here is original. I didn't replace this, I liked the doors and I liked incorporating this shelf. I designed and put this shelf in here just to split up the space a little bit, but um, this whole wall would be very easily replaced. So I'm not mad that it is a little bit, you know, patinaed, I guess you could say. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna finish cleaning up. Okay, it looks a little different in here, doesn't it? Yeah. It's all cleaned up. Oh, there's a mosquito in here. Yeah, seven guys. Oh, he left. Okay. Yeah, those things are gnarly here. So, well, um, Katie and I have decided that we are skipping the work yard and we're going to be put right into the water. So that means that we don't have to pay for any of the huge fees uh, associated with being in the work yard and to move the boat more than one time. Because um, we, yesterday we were going through a list of things that we need to do that would have to be in the work yard. And the list was so short that we were just gonna try and do them here well, while the we're in the storage yard. Well, the list was non We have pre-splashed things, but there's right. nothing on the work yard list. Right. So yeah, we don't have to do the bottom or anything like that. We don't really have to be sanding much. Now I am rebuilding the exhaust, which I'm in the middle of that project right now. But the thing that we're doing today, and Katie asked me to explain the process, so I figured I should have her film it. Um, <laughs> we have our forward seacock for draining the sink. Uh, it is giving us a little bit of an issue. The style of seacock on sea wind is called a tapered bronze seacock. So it's a cone shape and I'll show you when I take it apart here in a second. And they are one of the more hardy, long-lasting seacocks because if you take care of them, they last a very long time, indefinitely, really. So this one, the taper isn't fitting into the housing perfectly. And so when the seacock is open and uh, we're in the water, we'd get a almost continual seep of water through that joint that should be sealed watertight with the grease and everything that I'll show you. So what I had to do was I actually had to tighten up the lock nut that pulls the tapered part in more so much that you couldn't even work the handle to open and close the seacock. That's how we had to have it because that's the only way we could stop the water from coming in. So fast forward to now, Katie asked me, what does it mean to lap a seacock? So I'm gonna show you. Uh, and it involves a an oily paste that has like a pumice in it. You slide the tapered cone into that tapered mating housing of the seacock. You slide that back and forth with this lapping compound and it is supposed to actually sand a new surface onto the 
cone and match the two surfaces up. And then once you clean that off and you put the grease on and you put the seacock back in, it should be an identical mate. Uh, and then you'll be able to tighten it down to the point where you can work the thing and it shouldn't leak. Let's lap this son of a gun. Yep. So here is the seacock. You can see this is the handle and it moves like that. That would be closed and this is open. This is the style of seacock that we have for all, all of them on sea wind. Um, this cone in here, as you can see, there's a cone that fits in this body for some reason, and you can see the corrosion, that is leaking. And so I'm going to take this cone out of here, the lock nuts are on the back, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so here is, this is the nut that applies pressure to the backside of the housing that pulls the cone in because this is threaded and there's a, I'll show you. And then this is the lock nut where once you adjust this, you can bind this nut down onto this one and it locks it into place. And here, that's a washer, is the tapered cone. I had this out once and I cleaned all these seacocks up and re-greased them and they're in really good shape. I just can't understand. This, before I cleaned this thing up, this was one of the most smooth working seacocks on the boat. It just doesn't make sense why it would be. Sometimes you shouldn't mess with things. I was trying to do like preventative maintenance by taking it apart and cleaning it up and re-greasing it and then it just all went to hell. <laughs> and I've um, had problems with this thing ever since. So this is the cone. This is the surface that we need to true up because for whatever reason this is maybe a little oblong compared to the housing in there or vice versa. Not really sure which one. And so you have to basically like rub them together with this lapping compound. So per, per Spartan's website, the Seacock lapping compound is liquid sandpaper that provides a method for improving Seacock bearing surfaces. This specifically designed compound is used to, impro to improve small weeping problems when cleaning and greasing does not work. So that's what or we're- Or is uh, the problem. What'd you say? What? Or is the problem, is that what you said? <laughs> yes, preventative maintenance is the issue. And I think the, the sand, the pumice is actually a fine metal because it has to be harder than the bronze to, to, to sand it. Can you see, does it shine? Yeah, a little bit. That's crotch shot. Yep. Okay. So, so, so again, the metal immediately starts like falling to the bottom of the jug. I rotated the handle 90 degrees so we can get more of a, you know, the whole 360 degree rotation. So I turned it 100 or another 90 degrees and I'm just trying to apply pressure here. And I have no idea if this is how you're supposed to do it. So, well, it looks like dark, which means it's actually working because the dark color is, I'm assuming, the brass or bronze mixed with the oil. So that's that's pretty good. Um, and you can see how it's all one uniform color now. Does it show up? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm I'm gonna keep doing this and we'll get back to you. Okay, action. Those are very sharp. You should just put that down. Don't, yeah, be careful sliding that on there. I'm cutting these blocks of wood. I'm starting with this. It's my project because we have all this, we had all this dead space back here and we had like a metal spice rack that was completely rusted and we had just some sliding baskets 
and we put the baskets in other places in the boat. Um, and so we found these shelves at the container store, they're bamboo, and they're perfect because they're stackable, so we can use all of this space here. We have small ones. We have this um, clear, uh, like, rotating shelf. Um, also, like, with the front covering here, things will hopefully won't slide out, especially because they're facing forward. So, I'm cutting these to put shims behind the shelves. And then we'll screw these into the wall, and then we'll screw the shelves into these. Cool. I think that's everything. I'm being trusted with the saw. What kind of saw is that? Um... It's some kind of Japanese saw. Pull saw. It's a pull saw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't it Japanese though? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I need I need some leverage though. That's okay. Got yeah. Okay, so you can see here, this is the hole that lets the, the water through the seacock when it's open. And the two ceiling surfaces are on either side of the seacock hole. So I have successfully, looks like I've, I think the shininess means I've successfully mated the surface the whole way around on this forward part of the seacock on this, on this side. So I'm looking for that same shiny surface on this back part here. And this is the side that has been giving us issue. This side was always pretty good. It's been weeping from this side and you can see where it's been weeping from the corrosion here. So we're going to continue lapping. How does this one work again? Okay, uh, that's just a chuck so it spins. Yeah. And it'll tighten down okay. on whatever, yep. yeah. Got it. Yep. So you put that in there. Yep, tighten it down. Perfect. And then it kind of locks in that right. You just kind of tighten it up. And that should be it. Like that? Yep. Okay. Okay, so what are you doing? Show me your... Battery. Um, this is my wood block that I sawed in half. I sawed three in half, so now I have six pieces. So I drilled three sixteenths holes in a diagonal, mm -hmm. and then now I'm gonna countersink them. That's pretty good. A little bit more. Perfect. Awesome. And on my front, um, we have a very uniform, that shiny spot kind of disappeared and so I kind of like this better. This is a much more uniform looking color the whole way. I'm going to do one more round I think and then this should be pretty good. Alright, I think this is the last go at this. I really see all the bronze dust coming off. Here it is. Mm, wait, let me focus. Okay. So, it's a very nice uniform cover, color. And you can kind of see just a little bit of a shininess here and a little bit of a shininess here. So I'm hoping that this, and you can also see a nice crisp line where it etched. Um, this is just the bronze that is out in the air, so it's tarnished, and you can see a really perfectly straight line. So it definitely got onto this side, and even in the center where all that rough was, you can see it took most of that away. So, I'm hoping. Please don't leak. Please don't leak. So, we're going to put a very light coat over the whole surface. 
And I think I'm gonna put it in there and work it around and then take it out and clean it out again because there is still some lapping, you know, some pumice in there. It'll, it'll get um, kind of uh, mixed in with this grease and then I'll be able to clean the grease out and then I'll put the final uh, thing of grease on this and then put it in there permanently. Here's our final product. This moves, I have it tightened up, and there should always be a little bit of friction because the two tapered cones are what is sealing the water out. Okay, we're gonna get on to Katie's project. We can do this. We have to finish the kitchen before we go today. That trim right there sticks up off the countertop and so those can't actually sit against the wall. And I don't want to cut the trim out and it would be okay to have a little bit of, you know, space back there to breathe. So we made little shims that you won't see. Mm -hmm. So we have to put those and then we have to secure the shelves to the shims. So okay. we have some drilling to do. Vroom vroom. Parker, Greg fully put the shims on the wall. On the wall. So the next step is to um, take all of these off, start with the bottom one, and we're going to drill two holes and screw these to those spacers. All right. Do the last ones. They're good. Way to go, Snow. <laughs> so the next thing to do is to stick this thing down. We have some really heavy duty like, locking, uh, double locking Velcro that we are gonna stick this thing down and you'll be able to pop it off to clean. Um, yeah. So yeah, this uh, spice table, a turntable. Three, two, one. Bingo bongo. Alright. Let's clean up and go get a snack. Yeah. That is a wrap for the day. We are so hot and tired and hungry. Uh, Terry and Jeannie invited us out to dinner tonight, so we're gonna go do that. Okay. Wave bye to everybody. See ya.